Namaskar, you're watching Daily News and now let's take you live to MEA briefing. The forthcoming meeting between Prime Minister and President Ghani will also provide an opportunity to discuss the situation in Afghanistan and how the two countries can cooperate further for promoting peace and stability in that country. My second announcement pertains to the Hague Code of Conduct Against Ballistic Missile Proliferation, the HCOC. India has joined the Hague Code of Conduct Against Ballistic Missile Proliferation by notifying the HCOC central contact in Vienna through diplomatic channels. The HCOC is a voluntary, legally non-binding, international confidence building and transparency measure that seeks to prevent the proliferation of ballistic missiles that are capable of delivering weapons of mass destruction. India is joining the code signals our readiness to further strengthen global non-proliferation objectives. That concludes my announcements. The floor is now open to questions. Aditya. With us on June 1st, and today is the concluding day of a conference in Pakistan Islamabad on Kashmir. They are discussing the global dimensions of the Kashmir problem and India's so-called suppression in Kashmir. What is the reaction of the government of India? And, you know, uh, the president of Pakistan has also commented just yesterday addressing the joint session. He clearly has attacked India and said that India is uh, creating problems in the talks process while, uh, you know, Pakistan is ready for the comprehensive bilateral dialogue problems in the talks process uh, while, uh, you know, Pakistan is ready for the comprehensive bilateral dialogue. Insofar as the first part of your question is concerned, we completely reject the insinuations by vested interests against India, which has rightful sovereignty over the entire state of Jammu and Kashmir. We also stress that there are no global dimensions of the Kashmir issue except in the minds of those who seek to needlessly internationalize a bilateral matter. Pakistan needs to vacate its illegal occupation of parts of Jammu and Kashmir and address the suffering caused to millions in those parts. In so far as the second part of your question is concerned, regarding the statement made by the President of Pakistan, I would say that Kashmir is not the main cause of tension. The main cause for the lack of peace and continued instability in our region is externally sponsored terrorism and Pakistan's repeated interference in the internal affairs of India. Arunim. Uh, yesterday, uh, we had visiting U.S. Senator Bain Curtin said in a speech that he, although he was all for the federal system of governance, uh, the Indian federal system is challenging good governance. What is the government's position on that? I understand this was the senator's first visit to India. I also understand that he has had a number of meetings in, in Delhi, including with the foreign secretary, and we hope that as a result of those meetings, he has developed a better understanding and appreciation of India. Venkat. Because the nuclear suppliers group is meeting in South Korea later uh, this month, what are India's expectations from uh, this meeting? Are we expecting that uh, the India will be admitted to the NSG? Thank you. All I would say is that India applied for membership of the NSG on the 12th of May 2016. Our application is under consideration by NSG members. I am aware, of course, that there are some NSG meetings planned this month. Yeah. Seema. 
what are the other projects we have in Afghanistan? Have we more or less finished our main projects, or do we have something else in the pipeline? No, we have. I mean, Major uh, ones, I mean. as you know, our commitment uh, development uh, partnership with Afghanistan is over two billion dollars. Uh, the two big flagship projects were, of course, the Parliament Building and the Salma Dam, now rechristened as the India-Afghan Friendship Dam. But apart from that, you know, we have done the Zaranj Dela Ram Road. Uh, we have done various small developmental projects. Even the uh, the India-Afghan Friendship Dam is going to irrigate 44,000 hectares there. It's something which is really going to cause immense uh, benefit to Afghanistan. And I think that is the real uh, image that India has in Afghanistan as a partner which has stood by Afghanistan through all its difficult times, as a partner which has contributed immensely to Afghanistan's development, unlike some other partners who have contributed to instability and terrorism in Pakistan. Okay, Ranjit. Seniority first. Just to, just to follow up to the question on NSG, uh, India also aspires to become a member of other three export control regimes like Vasanar Arrangement, Australia Group and MTCR. So India, has India formally applied to join all these groups? Well, I would, on MTCR I can say that our application is on track. We expect the, the process of India's membership would be completed soon. And of course we remain in discussions on those other two, the Vasanar uh, arrangement as well as the Australia group as well. Soon means soon. Yes. Sir, uh, Pakistan ke Rashtrapati ne aapne statement mein ek aur baat kahi thi ki चीन और पाकिस्तान के साथ जो इकोनॉमिक कॉरिडोर है वो किसी भी हाल में बन के रहेगा नहीं उस पर मेरी प्रतिक्रिया मैं पहले भी दे चुका हूं पाकिस्तान के जिस भाग में चाइना पाकिस्तान इकोनॉमिक कॉरिडोर का कंस्ट्रक्शन या निर्माण किया जा रहा है वो भाग भारत का एक अभिन्न अंग है जो पाकिस्तान के अनधिकृत कब्जे में है और हम लोग ने ये स्पष्ट कर दिया है चीन को भी और पाकिस्तान को भी कि उस पर इस तरह का कोई कार्य नहीं होना चाहिए सचिन सर देर आर मैनी हंड्रेड पीपल्स स्टैंडर्ड इन नेपाल हु विश टू विजिट कैलाश मानसरोवर एंड दो द इंडियन एम्बेसी हेल्प देम टू एवेक्युएट बट मैनी मोर पीपल हु हैव प्लान एंड बुक देयर टिकट्स फॉर द यात्रा सो हाउ द एम ई ए वुड प्लान टू help them yeah no it's a good question because this is a developing situation which has been causing a lot of uh, difficulties uh, to the yatris so our first secretary from the indian embassy in kathmandu visited hilsa and simi court and coordinated with the nepalese authorities more than 400 stranded yatris have already been brought to surkhet and nepal ganj as of now there are no bottlenecks on this route however in view of the inclement weather which has been forecasted our mission in kathmandu has issued a travel advisories to indian yatris to avoid the nepal route the ministry of tourism has also been requested to advise tour operators in india not to overbook and to correctly brief pilgrims on the facilities available uh, if you want i can read out the travel advisory issued by our embassy in uh, uh, in kathmandu a large number of indian citizens have been going under own private arrangement for kailash mansarovar yatra via nepal ganj simi court hilsa it has been noticed that a number of them are facing logistical problems in hilsa and simi court primarily on account of bad weather which prevents regular evacuation from hilsa to simi court by helicopter and simi court to nepal ganj by fixed wing aircraft the embassy in cooperation with the government of nepal and tour operators is making all possible arrangements for timely evacuation of pilgrims from hilsa to simi court and from simi court to nepal ganj however inclement weather conditions are impeding regular air services thereby causing difficulties for the stranded passengers at hilsa and simi court since weather conditions are expected to deteriorate in the weeks to come indian citizens are advised to avoid the nepal ganj simi court hilsa route sharma ji vikas whenever the issue of kashmir arises hmm. you say that the pakistan should uh, vacate the territories which are illegally in its possession what about the territories which are in illegal possession by china itself directly it's the same thing you i don't mean don't say that no we say this of course we say that i mean why why, uh, why have so many why have so many rounds of the special representative talks been held 
because we have a boundary issue with China and the purpose of the special representative talks is to resolve that particular issue. Vinita. What are the steps that are we going to take and, uh, you know, any confidence building measures that... Well, I think uh, the confidence building measures have already been implemented. You saw the very, uh, you know, heartwarming positive statement that external affairs minister issued after her meeting with the African diplomatic as well as student community. Uh, we have, I think, been successful in diffusing the issue that was building up. Uh, uh, the Minister of State for External Affairs, Jai General V.K. Singh, also had a sensitization campaign in Chhatarpur where he met with the local residents. And now it has been decided, as EM had mentioned in her statement, that MOS V.K. would be tasked with going to all the major metros where concentrations of African community resides. I mean, three we can uh, say straight away, uh, Delhi, Bengaluru, Goa. But apart from that, other cities also where there are sizable uh, number of African residents. This would be worked out in consultation with the African Diplomatic Corps because they have to tell us the figures where they believe a large majority of their uh, citizens are residing. And the idea is we fully involve the state governments in this exercise. After all, law and order is a state subject. So the plan is for MOSVK, accompanied by Secretary Economic Relations, Sri Amar Sinha, to go to these cities with the police commissioners of those cities, meet the student community, the uh, locals, and do a you know, full outreach program where we hear their concerns, we try to put in place institutional mechanisms which can address those concerns. Uh, in this context, I would like to remind you that there was a very unfortunate incident in Bengaluru involving a Tanzanian national. And after that, the police did conduct a sensitization program. And since then, uh, I mean, we have noted very positively that not a single such incident has been reported from Bengaluru. So I think once we do this uh, sensitization program, this outreach program, secondly, Foreign Secretary has met with the African students. They have outlined the kind of problems they are facing. And they were really more relating to, you know, not getting the right accommodation, uh, the issues with their uh, regularization or, or extension of their visas with FRRO, etc. So there also Foreign Secretary has assured them that we will try to put in place institutional mechanisms so that these problems do not recur in the future. So I do hope that as a result of what actions ME has taken proactively and what actions we will take in partnership with other stakeholders, including the police authorities, the state authorities, that our African brothers and sisters continue to feel safe, secure, and welcome in India. Tripti. Thank you, Mr. Sarup. What is the exact position on India's membership of the SCO, and are we going to be represented by a prime minister there? Thank well, you. As I said, Prime Ministerial visits are announced as per a particular procedure. I have definitely not announced Prime Minister's visit for the SCO summit. Uh, our membership of the SCO is fully on track. As you know, the decision was taken at the last summit. We have to now complete the necessary procedural formalities. At the back. Thank you, sir. Um, Prime Minister Modi will make a very high... With NPR, right? National Julie, Public yes. Radio, yeah. Um, Prime Minister Modi makes a very high-profile uh, appearance before the joint session of the Congress in the United States. Could you give us a sense of what message is, uh, what the message is that he would be delivering, What's, what themes would he strike, will he be asking for anything of the Congress, and secondly, uh, are there deliverables that you anticipate out of this um, meeting, uh, out, of, out of the series of meetings with the Obama administration? Thank you. Uh, Julie, the Detailed briefing on the Prime Minister's forthcoming visits to five countries is going to be held tomorrow at 3 o'clock. So I would not want to steal the thunder of whoever would be doing that particular briefing. But I would make a general comment that this is the world's largest democracy going to the world's oldest democracy. And the U.S. Congress is obviously the temple of that democracy. So when the Prime Minister addresses the combined, uh, you know, the House and Senate uh, from that particular podium, uh, the message he would convey is that relations between the two largest democracies in the world need to strengthen, uh, need to further diversify so that we are both fully equipped to handle the challenges of the 21st century. And I think this will be a message of, uh, of partnership, uh, of respect, of mutual respect, and of accommodating each other's concerns. Uh, deliverables tomorrow, 3 o'clock. Well, uh, sir, uh, could you tell us the update about the missing Indian boy who was found in Bangladesh? Uh, yes, Sonu. Yeah. 
Well, as you know, our, uh, uh, an officer from the Indian uh, embassy in uh, Dhaka was sent to Jessore, to that, uh, uh, the child uh, rehabilitation center where Sonu is kept. He has met him. Uh, Sonu is in good health. Uh, he was in good spirits. Uh, and now, basically, we have to find what is the best way and the quickest way of getting him back because, as you know, we have to also deal with the, you know, the judicial setup in Bangladesh uh, in order to get him back. We are committed to doing that and we are in very close coordination with the Bangladeshi authorities to find out what's the best way to get Sonu back. Smita? Because after the India Today expose on, a, uh, on an accused person in Mauritius with links uh, in the Augusta Westland case, hmm. their financial commission services actually suspended him from uh, the agency and also gave him a notice of, uh, of uh, expelling him. Has the ED or the CBI in any way uh, sought MEA's assistance in trying to question this person? And B, on the Lalit Modi case, uh, has the MEA finished its legal consultation? When are you uh, approaching the UK authorities for extradition of Lalit Modi? Okay, on Lalit Modi, I can give you the readout which I have got from the Concerned Division. The Directorate of Enforcement sent a formal extradition request in respect of Mr. Lalit Modi to the Ministry of External Affairs. The extradition request was examined by the CPV Division in consultation with the Legal and Treaties Division of the Ministry. Keeping in mind the sensitivity of the case, the Directorate of Enforcement has been requested to intimate their concurrence on the options and suggestions made by the Ministry of External Affairs and to advise us how to proceed further in the matter. Now we are awaiting the uh, comments of the Enforcement Directorate. So basically, our legal experts have vetted the extradition request. They have made certain suggestions. Those suggestions have been forwarded to the Enforcement Directorate for them to concur with those. And once that happens, then the extradition request will be forwarded to the British authorities. On the, on the other thing, all I know is the uh, LRs which had been sent to various countries. I do not have a specific uh, answer on the individual that you have mentioned. Yes. On May 25th, uh, five Tamil fishermen are arrested by uh, Iranian Navy. So okay. what is the situation of uh, five of them? And totally how many uh, Tamil fishermen in uh, abroad uh, prisons? I mean, I do not have a breakup state-wise of uh, people, but, uh, you know, Sri Lanka, we have currently 11 Indian fishermen in their custody. And, uh, of course, we are impressing upon the Sri Lankan authorities for their expeditious release. What about Iranian, I do not have any uh, details on the uh, fishermen in Iran, but I can get that information for you next time. Uh, no, I think... Uh, Mukesh has been raising his hand for a long time. Uh, my question is relating to missiles. Uh, to missiles? Okay. Since you, uh, you, you informed us that we have entered HCOC, does that effectively mean that we, have, we are going to shelve our Agni 5 plus program? And secondly, uh, A.Q. Khan of Pakistan has said that nuclear Pakistan can target India within five minutes. Your response after that? Let me say that our national security interest would not be impacted in any manner whatsoever by India joining this voluntary Hay Code of Conduct against ballistic missile proliferation. What was the other question? I think uh, the Pakistan High Commissioner himself has characterized such remarks as being foolish. So I do not think I need to respond any further. Yes. I don't know whether you have already answered this in previous year. Uh, recently, an Indian delegation, parliamentary delegation, went to Bangladesh. And it's reported in Bangladesh papers that uh, they visited various areas, talked to various minority organizations, people, uh, and met also uh, the Indian High Commissioner. And they are, it's reported that they have been perturbed about the atrocities being perpetrated to the minorities, especially Hindus, in various parts of Bangladesh. Uh, could you please throw some light on that? whether they have come back and they're supported back to the MEA or not. Okay, I'll see if I have a read up on, on what you're asking me. No, I do not have any readout on that, but 
On this issue, I think we have been in touch with the Bangladeshi authorities. Uh, I, I can tell you from my past recollection. And the Bangladeshi authorities have assured us that they take the protection of minorities very seriously. And all such cases are investigated very promptly and uh, due process of law followed.